Hopefully you've gone through the process of finding out what your credit score is, looking at your credit report. So one thing to note before we talk about fixing, um, raising your credit score is I've noticed, and again, I look at a lot of people's credit reports, is 50% of credit reports have mistakes on them. So for example, I have a client who had the same name as her mother. There was a mistake there because her mother's charges were accounted there. Or you thought you paid a bill off, but in actuality it says that you didn't. So maybe, you know, one thing that also has come up is that I have a few clients that owed money to a dentist or something like very small nominal like that. And they are like, well, this was a wrong charge and I'm just not paying that. And then the dentist sent them to collections and just pay the bill. Like it's just not worth it to have it on. I mean, if you think there's a mistake or, but if it's a small fee, it can really turn into a much bigger deal and it can prevent you from getting a mortgage or really, you know, I mean, we hear these stories of people who have low credit scores. So if it's something that's small, just pay it off. Like put your ego aside, if you will, <laughs> and just deal with it. So what can you do? You can, first of all, just look through your credit report. And what it'll show is it'll literally show, OK, I owed money to Capital One. I owed money to American Express. Like, if you've never run a credit report, it's like 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 pages, especially if you've had a history. And then it literally shows, did you pay your bills on time? So if you have paid a bill late, call the company up. Call Citibank. Call American Express and say, can you take this off? Again, you're at no now until you ask for it. And I know the few times I've called, they've taken it off. So fix any mistakes. You have to most likely do this through the credit report or through the original agency or the original creditor. If there's a wrong item, you've got to dispute it. And I will say mistakes take six months to fix. So get started now because now you know, you've got the time. You don't have that pressing need of like, oh, I've got to get a mortgage right away. Or you don't have that pressing need of like, oh my goodness, I really want to get a loan for my business. Like you're showing up now because you want to make those changes with your money. So if there's mistakes, fix it. It can take up to six months. Dispute any wrong items. There are mistakes, so dispute them literally on Experian, on Equifax, on TransUnion. You can dispute it. Takes a while. Pay the bill. That's what I mentioned before. If you have a small bill that's outstanding and you don't agree with it, but you do owe the money, just pay it. It's not worth it. Stop applying for new cards. That's the best way to. So when I say stop applying for new cards is raise, ask for a limit increase on your card, but stop applying for new cards. Pass up store charge cards, which we mentioned before, and avoid too many inquiries. And the inquiries are really getting new credit cards, asking for new credit cards, just constantly applying for new things, transferring balances. So doing this can essentially raise your credit score by not um, applying for new cards, not getting the too many inquiries, but more just asking for the limit increases and fixing any mistakes. Uh, we have a question from Right Start Photography who's wondering if there's a professional that can look over credit reports and search for mistakes. Hmm. Is that something that can be outsourced or? Well, I think. You know, I'm sure there are professionals. I, I know somebody in my area that that's all they do. But usually, they look at mistakes or they look at credit reports if you have bad credit. So I mean, you know your history better than anybody else. So the mistake is really going to be, did I take out money on this credit card, but I didn't think I paid for it? Or did I, um, this amount that they say I owe is not what I owe? Or they said I paid late, but I didn't pay late. So I mean, you can absolutely pay an independent financial planner to work with you on that. Um, I know that there are a few people that deal with credit consolidation, but you know your history better than anybody else, so you're going to know the mistakes. We did actually have a question that was talking about, you know, um, of a credit card. Danielle Nicole said, who do we contact if the credit card won't reduce, reverse a credit score change that they were partially to blame for ruining? Um, my credit was always excellent, then there was a misunderstanding on theirs and mine, and now they won't fix it. Well, then okay. you're going to have to dispute it through the site, through the actual credit agency site. So you can contest it that way. I mean, at the end of the day, if you've disputed and they won't do it, there's nothing you can do about that. But try disputing it through the site themselves. And I've done that before. So I mean, it's, it takes time. So take the time to do that now. Keep the momentum. Listen, you went on the chat room. You asked the question. You're showing up today to watch this. Like, Take the time to, to make that change. That's going to be your homework. <laughs> Fashion Girl is asking, when trying to build credit back up, is it best to get a secured credit card through your bank or go with another company? What's well, I think, okay, that's, and actually, uh, that'll lead us to our how to build credit when you don't have credit. 
So in terms of secured credit card versus not secured, if you cannot get an unsecured credit card, then you don't have a choice to get secured. So what really the difference between unsecured is, so secured means that they're using collateral, which is money, usually, as an asset. So a secured credit card would be a $500 credit card. You actually give the credit card company $500, and then they say you've got $500 to spend on this credit card. And the main reason you do that is because you want to build a credit history. So they see that you're responsible. So essentially, you don't spend that 500. Your bill might be 100. You pay it off separately. But they're taking a risk that if you don't show up and pay your bill, they're going to take that $500. So that would be your first, your last step. So obviously, you want to apply for an unsecured credit card because that's going to build your history right away without you having to fork over the money. So that should be the first choice. Where do you find unsecured cards? I would start with, chances are, has anybody gotten those flyers in the mail? Start there, because th if you've gotten something in the mail, chances are they've done their homework, and they've thought that, for whatever reason, you're credit worthy, and they're asking you for a credit card, if you want to get a credit card. The other thing is go to bankrate or cardweb.com, and you can look for a credit card that you like, and just apply for one or two. If you get denied, then you know you got denied, and you've got to do a secured credit card. I wouldn't apply for 12, because that's part of the avoid too many inquiries. But if you apply for one or two, you should be OK. And if you get denied, then you know you have to do secured. Why not you put big ticket items on the cards? OK, so here's how to build credit when you have no credit. So the idea is that you're trying to build your credit. So the first is, which is the easiest, and I'm not saying we all want to do it, but if you have a family member that lets you become an authorized user on your card. So that would be the first one, which means you are responsible, but they are sort of backing you up or guaranteeing you. So that's the first one. If you have any income, open up a card. So if you can show any income through a W-2 or 1099, open up a card. Get the lowest rate card. Start using it for small, occasional monthly purchases. So if you put a big ticket item and you max out your card immediately, A, again, I'm seeing the habits, you're going to have a hard time paying it off. B, if you've maxed out your card, it's lowering your score, because now you have no credit available to you. Now, while you might pay it off, and if that's really the case, but if you're putting on $500, $1,000, $3,000 big ticket item on there, are you paying that off right away? So if you're putting it on and paying it off immediately because you've got the cash, that's a different story. But if you're putting it off because you can't afford it, that's what you shouldn't do. Because your goal to build credit is to pay off your balance each month. That means if it's $50, you pay it off. If it's $100, you pay it off. If it's $2,000, you got to pay it off. So doing this doesn't let you do that. You also have to pay all your other bills on time. Like if you pay your electric bill late, it's going to go on your credit. It's maybe not as, they'll turn off your electric bill, your electricity. <laughs> <laughs> but um, apply for as few credit cards as possible. So again, apply for one or two. Don't apply for 12. And then don't co-sign for friends. Like I put this on there recently because I kept hearing more and more stories about people who said, can you help me out? I've got some bad credit. I don't know if that's happened to any of you. Let me know. But I, I really, I, I was shocked at how many people would co-sign for a friend. You want to help your friends out, absolutely. And that's, you know, that's not a monetary decision. That's an emotional decision. And I can't tell you to do it or not to do it. But if you co-sign for a friend, you are putting your financial security at risk. So help them out in other ways. Be a support for them. Maybe lend them some money that you know that you may not get back. But don't co-sign a credit card. How to build credit when you don't have credit. Become an authorized user. So essentially, the co-sign for friends, you're asking your parents to do that. But maybe you're young, and your parents will do that for you. Or if you're a spouse or a sister or a sibling. If you have any income, chances are you will be able to get a card. So one of the th when we talk about banking, one of the things I like to do, we're in the era of big banks. I mean, the banks keep consolidating. So you can go to our credit union. But there's, there's some good reasons to be with a large bank, too. So I've been with Chase for a long, long time. And again, I don't work for them. This is just my bank. Um, one of the things that I do is wherever I bank at Chase, whether it's near my office in New York City or it's at my home in Connecticut, is I go into the local bank and I right away introduce myself to the bank manager. And even though I do most of my banking online through online bill pay and, um, you know, I, gosh, I can't remember the last time I wrote a check. I mean, really, everything is online. I still go into my bank and I say, hi, I'm Galia Gishon. I've got an account here. I have my business account here. Nice to meet you. Can you help me? I usually don't need their help, but guess what? I've made face-to-face -face contact. 
So do that. If you're banking anywhere, go into your local bank. People still like that touch. They still want to know you. And when you need a new credit card, you can go to your local bank and say, don't you remember? I met you six months ago. I met you a year ago. I've had a checking account here for two years. Can you help me get a credit card? You're at no now, and I guarantee you, by having a little bit of that personal interaction, they're more inclined to give it to you. If you're in good shape, if you don't owe any credit card debt, and if you're, you know, relatively, if you're in relatively good shape, maybe you don't have the history, but if you don't have a lot of credit card debt, you should be able to get a new credit card from your local bank if you've made that choice. I mean, that's where a credit union can help as well. But if not, again, get the lowest rate card. Just, and when you do get the card, just start using it for very small purchases. We've all been there where you have your credit card in your pocket and you think, oh, I really want that, but I can't afford it, but I can put it in my credit card. I've been there. We've all been there. I have a stepdaughter, she's 20, and um, I know that, Sally, you have a couple teenagers. Um, would you suggest as a parental tactic to maybe secure a credit card for um, people in, the, in that younger age group to kind of monitor and help them uh, get some of their lending habits? It's um, the best gift you can get them. Practicing. Because, absolutely. Yeah. So either get them a secured credit card, or if you feel comfortable, put them on your account. Mm. I mean, you have to feel comfortable and trust them that they're not going to go to Nordstrom and just go on a shopping spree. But, <laughs> and if you are nervous about that, then get them a secured card. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I mean, in their name, you yeah, know, maybe yeah. even giving in them their the name. cash and saying, yes. hey. It's, it's the best lesson you can give them. It's okay. absolutely. I think it's such a great tool, such a great gift, if you will. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other thing is if they have the cell phone, you can put the cell phone in their name. Mm. So get it off your plan if that's what it's on and really put the cell phone bill in their name. Again, you're running the risk that they're going to charge it up, but and then maybe you give them the money to pay for it. But at least they're getting the cell phone bill in their name, which is a great tool also to help for parents to help their kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, quick question from the chat room. Um, Jamie wants to know if she and her husband have one credit card in both of their names, same card number, two physically separate cards. If they use her card more often, does that help build her husband's credit, or would he need to use his actual card to do no, that? No, I think he just has to make sure that he's an authorized user on the card. So what I found also, just from a lot of women who got divorced, is while they had a credit card and they thought it was joint, they weren't an authorized user on the account. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, and, and this is a little bit old fashioned, but a lot of women who maybe didn't work or who more stay at home, you want to make sure that you are an authorized user on the account so you're building credit in your name. So the question is if they're using her card, is he an authorized user? There's no discrimination here. Yeah. <laughs> We're helping the men out also. <laughs> yeah, so just make sure if they use her. It's a great, great question. And most of us don't know the answers to this because we don't take the time Mm -hmm. to learn this, you know, and we're not taught this in school. We're not taught about our, right? Isn't it ludicrous that we're not taught our credit yes. report and credit history in college or high school or any kind of school that we go to? I mean, and when you think about how essential it is to having your own business, to buying a home, to building security, so how do we know that? So it's a great question. So over the break, multi-step process, if you have never run your credit report or have you, if you have not done it in 12 months or more, Run your credit report, get your FICO score. So do both of you know your FICO score? Yeah, great. Happy with it? Yeah. Good? Awesome. How about you guys? No. Sally? No, you don't know it? No. Okay. How about you, Halila? Yes. Yes. Are you happy with it? I'm happy with it. Okay, good. Not a static, but okay. happy. Okay, happy. I didn't say it's static. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sally, over I'll the break. Find it <laughs> you, know, you know, I looked at a while ago because we, you know, we had to build it from scratch. Yeah. yeah. In five years. I think it's okay, but I wouldn't I don't know what it okay, is. Okay, so run it. Okay. Over the break, run okay. it. Okay. Um, Run your credit report, or if you haven't done it in 12 months. So I think it's okay to do it once a year. If your credit report has mistakes, make the time to dispute them and fix them. And if you can't dispute them, accept that you can't and move on. There's only so much you can control. Just don't let it control you. I think that's the point of this whole course, is money is taking us over, and we are scared and fearful of it, and it controls us and it influences our decisions. So in this case of the gentleman who has disputed it, and he couldn't fix it. I'm so sorry that's happened to you. You've got to move on. And you'll get past it. And you'll do other things around it. If your credit score is less than you would like, take actions to raise it. Pay off your bill. Pay your bills on time. Ask for limit increases. Become an authorized user. Use it on a very small amount. And pay off that bill every month. Get credit if you don't have it. And as I mentioned here, Use it for small occasional purposes. 
So you should still use it, but just use it very small purchases. And again, if you don't have a history, don't use the debit card. So credit cards are good. They build your credit report as you see we need. You just want to make sure that you don't accumulate debt. Differences over different types of credit cards, like Visa and MasterCard versus American That's a good Express? Question. Or... That's a really, really good question. <laughs> so I think you have to think about what is important to you. So I know for me, I do love to travel. And so I have always been a slave to the frequent flyer cards. Mm -hmm. So I have two. I have um, an American Express, which lets me do anything. I mean, except for American Airlines. It lets me do United and Delta and Continental and... Um, yeah, you name it. So I pretty much, you know, have, fl have flown once or twice a year for me and my fam for my family and I. Um, but then I also have an American Airlines card because when I traveled for work many years ago, I just started building that up because my company would only do American Airlines. Um, and then just and then I fly JetBlue a lot because JetBlue has a route that I like to go visit my parents. So, you know, selfishly, I have an American Express and a Mastercard. That's both, and I really use them 50-50. And I do have a work credit card. That's also American Airlines. So I probably pay a seventy-five dollar annual fee for all three for each card. It's worth it to me. I have spoken to clients who are like, I will not pay a fee. A lot of clients want cash back. That's a big thing with credit cards. So you can get Discover, you can get Fidelity, you can get Barnes and Noble, you can get. Um, I have a client who uses an Amazon card. Again, I'm not promoting any of these companies or supporting them. But she gets money towards Amazon because she spends, she buys her groceries practically on Amazon. Mm -hmm. So I really think it's what's important to you in that sense. Uh, from the chat room, Chung Lee is saying, believe it or not, I just called my Chase Visa card to ask for an increase in my credit limit. They said they can increase it after they run my credit report. They did it. I requested a $4,000 increase. The whole thing was done in five minutes. Yeah. I wish I knew that earlier. <laughs> Victory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, I love it when it works. <laughs> and I'm not saying that I'm shocked because I'm not, but usually when I work with a client, it's an hour session or we do an hour seminar and I say, okay, I'll see you next week, I'll see you next month. And then I have to wait. I might get an email and they say, oh, Galia, look what I did, this is great. And, but this is after the fact. I mean, talk about instant <laughs> gratification. This is amazing. So, and see how easy that was, yeah. really. So, I mean, I can't stress that enough is that you're showing up here today. Make, you know, do the homework. Just show up, like bite-sized pieces. So I think we're going to start getting on budgets. Or do we have any other questions on the credit report before we get going? No, I think we're more than ready for budget. OK, awesome. So we're not going to be talking about debt and credit that much anymore over the next few days. So if you have any more questions, let us know. But what I want you to think about with debt and credit, because they can definitely hold us back, so just to kind of summarize that, is have a plan to pay off your debt, make sure you've got a credit score, a credit report, clean up your credit. It is so important for your overall financial health, but don't let it hold you down. Because from now on, for the next few days, today and the next two days, we're only gonna be talking about the sky's the limit with our money. We're gonna talk about spending plan, which I love spending plans. I don't think of it as a negative thing. I think of it as an opportunity for me to really control my money, spend on what I want so I can do more with my life. Tomorrow, we're going to start learning about investments and retirement plans, which all of you can do. Again, the world, it's our oyster in terms of investments and retirement plans. Home finance, wills, these are all wonderful things about taking care of ourselves. So now that we've dealt with debt and credit, which kind of can be a little Debbie Downer or hold us down or really focus on the negative areas in our life, hopefully you've got some resolution around it. You know what you need to do. You know the homework that you really need to do around that. You can kind of put it behind you and move forward from where you are. And so what I would suggest, and I know that um, you know Sally and Halil are doing this on the chat rooms, but think about your situation. If you're really stuck with your budget, let us know. I'd love to do some numbers with you, you know, especially you guys too. So let's talk about um, spending smarter plan, also known as a budget for freelancers. Just on the budget, because there is a little chat already, we've given a call out and said that if you would like to send in your numbers, um, people are wondering what numbers you want. Do you want those four categories that you started the day with? So I would say with a budget, number one, if you've got questions on your income, how to figure out your income, because you're stuck on that, don't let that hold you back. So give me some scenarios on how should I figure out my income. What I would suggest is look at their fixed expenses, and I will talk about that but really just start putting some of those fixed expenses together. 
So maybe it's 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 2,000, whatever. What are those numbers? Think about, in terms of the budget, what do you need to work on in terms of your goals? So I'm going to keep harping on this, but do you need to save more for a rainy day or your emergency fund? Like, let's build a budget around that. Do you need to save more for retirement? I'll just put IRA, because we're not sure which IRA, but we'll talk about that tomorrow. Or do you have a specific goal, like a vacation, or down payment, or a coat, or I say a coat because it's freezing in San Francisco, <laughs> <laughs> or a um, equipment? Perfect. So do you want to save for some of these? So what is your income? How do I figure that out? My fixed expenses? And then I'll tell you what you can spend on food and things like that right. <laughs> with what's left over. That's great. Thanks. But that's a little bit how you should think about it, is that because the food part, the clothing part, the taxis, you know, whatever is your, you know, I say food, because that's usually the biggest thing where our money goes, we eat out or our clothing or, you know, maybe you've got, I mean, who knows what your, I don't want to say vice, because it's by no means a vice, but, you know, who knows where your sort of hole in your pocket is? We all have different holes in our pockets. I mean, I have a, a client, she said her husband is like a, a techno guy, and just the stuff he orders, she's like, I didn't even know it existed, like the wires that come in and the boxes. And <laughs> um, but what this is, this is the part that sort of gets us into trouble, that doesn't let us do this, and we get stressed about this, and we don't know what this is. But you can control this part, and by controlling this part, this all sort of falls into place. You know, it's really funny. This is a long time ago, the first year I was in business um, and learning about business deductions and whatnot, and dining and entertainment. Um, but it was like a pretty big shock when I realized that I could only write off half of <laughs> of the uh, dining dining and entertainment. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you know, yeah. and deductions are <laughs> deductions are definitely a funny thing. And it's funny that you bring that up because, <laughs> so my thing with deductions is I used to hear this, well, you know, my accountant says I've got so many deductions or I need to spend this money, otherwise I'm gonna have to pay taxes on it. Well, I'm gonna be a little bit of a, um, a you know, a little bit of a controversial person and I'll say, I'd rather you pay taxes on that money and put the rest into savings than spend the money on something that you might not really need and not pay taxes. Mm -hmm. So say you have an extra $1,000 and your accountant says, well, you better spend that $1,000 so you don't pay taxes. I'd rather you spend 700 because maybe you're paying 30% taxes. So remember, you, excuse me, you spend 300 on taxes, so you are giving it to the government, which I know not everybody wants to do. But then guess what? You've put 700 into savings. Rather than spend 1000 on business dinners or a new computer that you might not need, if it's truly something you need, absolutely spend it. Mm -hmm. But very often we try and spend those last minute expenses because it's the end of the year and we want the deduction. You know what, pay the taxes and put the money into savings. Really, you are paying yourself. I mean, if you don't want to pay taxes, then you have to look for other deductions that maybe make sense, or maybe get a better handle of where your money's going. So, but it is a great point. <laughs> They're like, oh, this is a business deduction, I can do it. This is a business expense. You're still spending the money. It's just before tax or after taxes. Okay, your spending smarter plan. Why create it? Like, why is it so important? So I have worked with so many artists over the last 11 years, 12 years, free, freelancers and artists. And I cannot stress that enough that maybe you've been watching this and you've been sort of on the couch thinking, yeah, this is important. Sit up. <laughs> this is the time when you need to focus. Like, you need to focus on the debt, the credit. But this is, I love this picture. This is the foundation of healthy money habits. Your house cannot be built. Your house in terms of your healthy financial life cannot be built until you focus on your spending plan. And I love my spending plan. My spending plan lets me know, can I go out for dinner? Can I buy a new outfit? Can I buy new shoes for my daughter? Am I also saving for my vacation? Am I also saving for my IRA? And I actually don't have to think about it once I've set the systems into place. 